good morning everybody we will start with a homework problem uh, we derived the gem conditions for acoustic pressure and acoustic velocity uh, in the presence of an unsteady heat release now I want to find the conditions <coughs> if there is an area gem so we do not have unsteady heat release rate what is the uh, what is the condition for pressure and what is the condition for velocity so that is the first problem derive the gem conditions in the absence of any unsteady heat release now second condition is let us say for a moment that there is an unsteady heat release here q prime or q dot prime and what would be the gem conditions in the presence of the unsteady heat release rate so that is the second second question very simple straightforward you have any question from last time no okay so uh, we uh, said that we will try to do uh, to see the equivalent of model analysis uh, or the frequency domain analysis now we will do it in the time domain and we will attempt to do it in the context of a Riccati tube uh, because we in a very general thing it is very hard to do uh, that too particularly in a classroom so I will uh, proceed to do this in the context of a uh, Riccati tube so what we have I will show you a small video so the humming you hear is the sound of the blower uh, so okay it went too fast sorry so th this is the Reiki tube uh, on the left side there is a uh, decoupler or a, a settling chamber on the uh, right side also there is a decoupler this is the heater which is used to uh, provide the uh, heat release rate so it is like a wire mesh which is a low resistance and we heat it with a high ampere current and uh, when you put this inside the tube at certain location if you have the right amount of heat you will get thermoacoustic instability now let us look at the regular instability so it just came on its and you can see the trace on the uh, oscilloscope so this is like a it came spontaneously as soon as the heater power was turned up it, it just came on and and uh, you can set the heater power we are having a program running with lab view and uh, frequency is 175 hertz and uh, and you can see the growth of the oscillations and they are going to uh, reach some kind of uh, limit cycle in the end and uh, you are having very strong oscillations and you can see the uh, pattern of the oscillations you can see very nice sine waves and, and so on okay so this is the uh, case of uh, uh, exponential growth but it did not exponentially grow forever eventually it reached some kind of asymptotic state where the amplitude stop, stop growing because if the pressure keeps growing forever eventually I mean you know something has to catch up like I told you if you get money eventually people come to take the money away from you this clear you want to see the movie again or no or yes I have no idea what no okay I think the volume may be too much just now I will show you show you trick uh, uh, what is triggering so we said that triggering would be that if uh, uh, there are disturbances and the disturbances are below certain threshold level everything will die down but if the disturbances are above some threshold level you will actually go to instability okay <coughs> so right now uh, you have the you hear the hum of the blower that is all and we will give a small pulse and we will see what happens then we will give a bigger pulse <coughs> yeah, so we gave a pulse but just eventually died down you can see it just the oscillations grew and then decay and, and I am actually putting um, some sine wave for 7 cycles and then leaving the system and it came down now we had a amplitude free, the frequency of the oscillation was 175 hertz and the amplitude was uh, which was or the signal given to the loudspeaker was 0 0.2 now we will jack it up to let us say 0 
and we can see that asymptotically went to quiet state now I'm going to change it to so it, it still did not do anything So, it went to instability and you can see the uh, uh, this was the initial condition that I gave this is the final state and this is the time evolution. So, this is the um, uh, so called uh, triggering instability or what you can say uh, this is uh, subcritical transition to instability and the region in which this happens is like a bistable region. Uh, uh, do you have any questions about this? I think. Yes, yeah, see, you can't really look at uh, one particular pressure measurement and say anything. What you have to do is to look at the net energy of the system. So you have to measure the pressure and um, and the velocity, and velocity may be indirect or direct measurement all over the tube, and then integrate all of this and get a measure of the acoustic energy, and that would be growing. We have checked that for this case. Uh, so, I think locally there will be differences during the transients I think. Any other question? So, this is like uh, you know uh, 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 let us consider uh, just to give a some bad examples uh, situations about stability. We are not used to thinking about stability although we see unstable situations all the time. But since I am worried about instability, I see everything in terms of instability. So, let us look at uh, profs. There are some profs, whenever you come, they would not say anything. You can come at 8, 9, uh, they would not be uh, saying too many things. There are some other profs, so they are like linearly stable systems, all linear, non linear, everything is stable. There are some other profs, okay, if you, uh, uh, if you do not come at 8 or 0 or even maybe he will give two seconds delay or something anything after that he will throw you out. So, that is like he gets spontaneously upset and he will be very mad at you if you are uh, coming late and he will be angry and grade also will come down. But there are some other professors okay three or four people are not coming he would not worry he would continue his thing and uh, if you come two minutes late it may be okay three minutes it may be okay if you try to push it five minutes it may be okay. The next day five minute and one second he just threw you out he gets got mad. So, that would be like a uh, subcritical bifurcation he uh, till you cross the threshold he was not getting upset, but if you cross the threshold uh, and he got up uh, he got angry. It also depend on the context in which this happens if you look at life. So, when people are under pressure smaller disturbances can uh, create a lot of problems. So, uh, let us consider a household um, when you are small children you can imagine your dad and mom goes to work and it is morning and 8 o'clock and so on. So, normally you make a mess and no nothing happens everything is life is stable you make a mess at 3 o'clock in the afternoon everything comes breaks you broke lot of things ok eventually you throw away or parents came and cleaned up and everything became alright. But let us say your mom and dad has to go at uh, uh, 8 o'clock to work and you broke something at 7.55 and you have to go also go to school. Now, what happens uh, dad scolds you or mom scolds you one of them, whichever one has a short temper and then uh, you say something and then he gets really violent and he starts breaking other things and then the kid goes hysterical let us say for you yourself go hysterical or your little sister or brother goes hysterical and your mom who was so far ok now gets really angry because a total mess has been made and now she has got gone hysterical. Now, dad has two options whether to completely go crazy and shut down and or he has to calm everybody down. So, now maybe that is not even a limit cycle it is very chaotic instability has happened. Uh, whereas, the same thing if it happened at 6 o'clock in the morning things would have been peaceful, if it happened at uh, 8 o'clock at night also things would have been peaceful, but 
755 uh, it gets uh, a small disturbances amplify a lot because they have to go at 8 o'clock. So, it depends on the uh, context at which it happens. So, in, in this re k 2 for example, there is a heater and if I put a lower level of power whatever I do it will stay stable. I it would not go spontaneously un unstable and even if I break a bomb there it would not go unstable. But as I increase the power first the uh, subcritical instability will start happening. So, I have now I have more power and now above some threshold levels it will go unstable below it will stay uh, stable and I increase the power some more anything will become unstable. So, as you come close uh, to this uh, critical point beyond that uh, like at 759 and your dad has to catch 8 o'clock as you come close to 759 or something anything can go un un unstable. So, it depends on whereas, if further away from this 8 o'clock it would be uh, things will be quite stable. So, life is uh, also like this thermoacoustic systems I mean uh, in general I like to view instabilities in terms of life. So, uh, we will show you more thermoacoustic systems in the coming classes, uh, but we attempt to try to do these things in a time domain any other question. get my glasses one second. So, what, what we do is to uh, derive the uh, equations in the non dimensional form I think it is generally good to do things in the non dimensional form, but then uh, it takes effort to do things in the non dimensional form that is why I did not introduce it and uh, there will be uh, more questions as to the choice of non dimensional variables which I wanted to avoid and or postpone till now, uh, but now we can face them. And so, I will use this opportunity to teach you how to do non dimensionalization and we will construct a simple toy model for a thermocystic system which is actually what I showed here a horizontal Ricci tube. Uh, remember that the uh, classical Ricci tube is a vertical tube where the uh, there is no blower you just uh, uh, set up the heater somewhere in the tube and the heater creates a draft and that draft itself is the mean flow and those uh, uh, devices become unstable when the heater is at the lower half particularly at L by 4 uh, quarter length it will be uh, really unstable. Uh, but this horizontal tube uh, the advantage of this is uh, disadvantage first disadvantage is that you have to have a blower to create the mean flow, but the advantage is that uh, your blower power or the, uh, the velocity mean flow or the flow rate which is driven by the blower and the heater heater power can be independently varied. You have a one control knob for the blower another for the heater power whereas, in the vertical Ricci tube if you increase the heater power the velocity will also change and you have no way to adjust the velocity separately and this has so more possibilities of getting unstable and more ways of uh, so more flexibility to operate. So, uh, let us look at the governing equations. And uh, so, uh, we will uh, use variables with tilde for the dimensional quantities and without tilde for the non dimensional quantities. Uh, normally, people do otherwise, but I wish to deal with things in a non dimensional way. So, most of the time I will be having non dimensional equations. So, when I have most of the time something I do not want tilde over it, that is the only rationale. So, tilde indicates. Uh, dimensional quantity of absence of tilde would indicate non dimensional quantity. So, that is the convention that we use otherwise we use the um, everything else the same.
So, what is this equation we have derived this except that there is a tilde on top otherwise we know this equation what is this equation Nafis. Hmm? Momentum. Momentum. We have the belief that first we have to write continuity. So we have to look before you see. So let's non-dimensionalize this. So all variables will be non-dimensionalized with some reference quantity and you will see what are the reference quantities as I am doing. I will write the equation and then explain. So, divided here uh, the velocity by reference velocity u naught, time by a reference time. So, u naught is the base flow velocity or the mean flow velocity. So, let me write that u naught. <coughs> base flow velocity or the mean. Uh, the, uh, the base flow is the proper term because the perturbations are happening over an underlying base flow that is the that is the way okay that is that is the way you think about it. Uh, uh, and uh, so, you non dimensionalize pressure with that atmospheric pressure and uh, uh, L a by C naught is a time scale. And what time scale? L a is the length of the acoustic zone let us say and C naught is the we pretend that the speed of sound is constant. So, we have a uh, constant C naught that is what the constant value which is why subscript C naught and what does this time scale denote? So, the so, travel time of the sound wave through that. So, uh, now I was expecting a question now since you did not ask I will ask you why did I use U naught and why not uh, C naught to non dimensionalize the velocity. So, what let, let me here I used uh, uh, in, 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 in pressure I used p bar which is a small quantity. Yeah, there is some answer somewhere there actually uh, can you. Uh, so, some non linearities are important and you want to display that non uh, uh, something to be coming close to one when non linearities are important that is absolutely right why as you pointed out uh, that you are implying that uh, as u naught comes closer to u bar you will have non linearities what kind of non linearities. No, actually if you are really worried about that term you should non dimensionalize with speed of sound actually. Uh, so, uh, that is one form of non linearity, but even earlier another non linearity would come. Yes, Anvisha I, I cannot hear you, can you speak loudly? I no, that that is what he is also saying, but I am saying there is another form of non linearity in this Rikki too. What, what you said is perfectly right there is nonlinear acoustics, but let us uh, think what else is there. So, what, what are the things in the Rikki tube there is acoustics and heat. So, there is a flow and hydrodynamics and so on. Also the heat is always taken by the flow. Now, what happens when the velocity fluctuations <laughs> increase? Let us say uh, as he pointed out let us say u prime becomes of the order of u bar then what happens to the flow. What is it what, what is the physical thing that happens when u prime is greater than <coughs> u bar. You have a flow over a cylinder let us say in the uh, Rikki tube and then what happens when u prime is greater than u bar physically. 
Huh? No, we are having heated cylinders, so there is no blow up, but the direction of flow reverses. Ah, flow reverses. So, is that uh, so? What would that affect the? How who would that affect the heat transfer? Which Vishnu said something happens to heat transfer when uh, flow reverses. So, would the heat transfer depend on the direction of velocity, or would it matter if I blow with a uh, blow this way and that way? Let's say I feel cooling. Now, does it matter if I'm blowing this way, or does it matter I'm blowing this way? Hmm? Speak loudly, and hmm? If I blow it from left to right, will I get more cooling than or less cooling than right to left? No. no. Okay, so it depends on the just the instantaneous magnitude of the velocity. But then, when we have flow reversal, one time you have what, what is the, let's have let's say we think of u bar and u prime. So when the flow uh, when the mean flow and the fluctuations, if they are aligned in the same direction, let's say they are co -clo flow. What is the instantaneous velocity? U bar plus u prime. When they are opposite direction, now we have u bar. Minus. So there is some unsymmetry involved and so on. So now uh, and and the heat transfer is proportional to the it does not depend on the uh, uh, it does not depend on direction. So, there is like a some modulus sign sitting here which is actually a nonlinearity. So, in physical sense uh, this would be uh, uh, some way to look at it. So, we want to ensure that our nonlinearity has become important let us say when uh, uh, u, 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 u prime is of the order of u bar. So, then if you non dimensional with respect to u bar or u naught it helps. But if you want to make the other term look important, then I think uh, you can non-dimensionalize with uh, uh, with C naught or something like that. So, uh, is, is that okay? So, when you do non-dimensionalization, you do whatever you want so that you get what you want. Yeah. Like. Meter per second, very, very, yeah. One meter per second, half meter per second, one and a half <coughs> meter per second. And between mean flow and base At flow least in that particular region. What is the exact difference between mean flow and base flow? So there is uh, no difference. It's just a terminology that uh, under the there is a steady base flow. That means when there is no instability, there is some difference actually. So there is a. So, let us say if things were quiescent, and we have underlying base flow on top of it, you have built instability. Now, once the instability happens and you reach some state, and now you take the mean of that, it may be different from this quiescent uh, uh, base flow state because if you have uh, non linear terms then the average of a fluctuating quantity may not be the uh, average quantity before the fluctuation started. So, the mean flow need not be equal to uh, the uh, flow which was present when everything was quiescent which I would call as base flow. On top of this base flow the instability rights and now once you instability is on and the mean quantities themselves can change. For example, if you are looking at flow around cylinder you have a pulsating flow around the cylinder will actually set up a secondary unsteady mean flow which uh, which is called streaming which is uh, different from the um, that is some extra thing over the original base flow that is there. So, uh, I mean you have uh, a if, if, if you have in solid rockets for example, when the instability comes on the uh, everything changes and the mean pressure itself will will change because now the burn rate has changed and more things are coming out and so on. So, base flow means the instability is not there and just came on and before it came on what was there. So, uh, it, it just if, if you are talking about a equation with quiescent medium, then we can think of think about the main vari mean variables, but I would prefer to use the base flow term. Uh, I hope you understood the difference. No, there is a base flow right, you can have flow, but no instability. No, you can have large flow also if there is no instability. Without instability. Yeah. Base With flow is flow without any instability. Without any perturbation. Everything is steady. 
So, <coughs> the base flow is steady, but mean flow can be the average of an unsteady quantity and this average need not be equal to the uh, value of the flow base flow before the instability was on. It is a big difference. Right? See base flow is a is a uh, thing in our mind is it possible yes, but is it possible to stop instability and see the base flow as it is I, I mean only to some extent because there will always be some fluctuations, but base flow is always there because it is something which you say is there. <coughs> so, that is a subtle difference, but the base flow versus mean flow sometimes it can uh, lead to some differences in some uh, uh, particular uh, cases I can show you later on. Any other question? Very nice question. You can have steady, steady base flow and it will be quiescent. Quiescent would mean nothing is fluctuating, that is my definition of quiescent, not nothing is happening. So, how steady is steady? There are always some fluctuations, so when it is quiescent, when you say quiescent, how steady is that? I mean, what? There is a trick question. See again uh, you have to uh, this is a very trick question and I, I do not know if I am answering correctly, but I am really impressed uh, by you and your question. Uh, so, let us say you have a Ricky tube with cylinders and all that. So, the flow is there, but there is no instability let us say. So, I have put the heating value low or I, I did not even turn the heating let us say uh, and let us say my cylinders are big enough so that I can get or the flow velocity is high enough so that I can get the. Uh, Reynolds number over 40 and, and I get vortex shedding from the cylinder. So, the base flow is now actually unsteady, but there is no instability. So, I can have an unsteady base flow, but the and that is acoustic instability has not happened, but there is some hydrodynamic instability that is happening. So, it is a uh, so the acoustics rides over a unsteady hydrodynamic flow. Now, if you are studying about if you are to study hydrodynamic instability, you would call something else as base flow. If you are looking at the instability of the flow over a cylinder, you would probably call something else a cylinder, but I am looking at the uh, stability of the acoustic waves in conjunction with everything else. So, hydrodynamic stability is there, but my eventual outlook is to look at acoustic instability. So, that is what in its absence what is there, so there is an unsteady base flow. So, base flow, uh, but if you view just zoom out and view only in terms of the acoustics then uh, I mean you can think of it as the uh, uh, the, the quiet thing that existed uh, in terms of the acoustics. Now, all pressures and all unsteady things would not really translate to sound I mean the hydrodynamic fluctuations which do not necessarily have to be converted to acoustic fluctuations I think it is a little difficult topic, but I am hoping that I will cover, cover it I think those guys they are not here uh, who gave me hard time in the first class. Uh, that are uh, all what, what pure and actually yeah. Uh, so, uh, all uh, oscillations are not acoustics. What is the definition of what, what is meant by acoustic oscillation? Yeah, so if you take your equations and you look at the characteristic velocities or the eigen values, you will have disturbance of propagating at speed of sound and, uh, and, and that is sound okay that is acoustics. Uh, now, you have disturbances which, are, which can propagate at speed of the flow which are give example uh, vortex hydrodynamic instability and entropy fluctuations like if you are hot spot it can be carried away. So, those are uh, non acoustic fluctuations. So, there is a distinction and, and uh, it is a very uh, very uh, sometimes it gets very difficult to deal with this distinction ok. Thank you any other question I am very pleased with this question sir anything else ok. So, now we will try to simplify this try to go slow so that so let me collect things around I think I made a I, sh I should have multiplied by u naught when it divided. So, is this algebraically correct? Any mistakes? Yeah. 
I should use rho naught actually just to be consistent so that uh, this naught is to acknowledge that I am just keeping a constant value and so on although it could be changing it will change right a rho naught and you know density will jump uh, velocity will jump temperature will jump but we are ignoring it just putting a mean value or something like that. So, if I uh, divide throughout by p bar and uh, I can remove this L a and I can bring this p bar here. So, I can multiply both top and bottom by gamma. I think I should use p naught also here. Okay. If I make mistakes, please let me know. So, gamma p by rho, what is this? C naught square, and there is a C naught here, so that will go. So, I get gamma u naught over C naught. Did you get the same equation? Ah, x. Yeah, thank you. That was a big mistake. Any other mistakes? And make sure assignment when you snap your fingers, how does it produce sound? So, you can when you we are studying acoustics, right? When you snap your fingers, why does it make so bubble acoustics is very big subject, actually. A lot of people study it, but we are not studying. Okay. Now, back to the question which I think you asked long time back how do we know? this equation is right or how do you know this describes. So, I have assumed this equation in some sense and if how, what did you do to get this equation if you remember go back to the second class and third class. Oh. We said u equal to u bar plus u prime and then we drop the u bar, but how could you just uh, do all these things because u u bar uh, u bar is also fluctuating i mean it's not really u bar in sense u bar plus u prime u prime has a hydrodynamic component and acoustic component and how did you pack the hydrodynamic component hydrodynamic component would definitely be important the hydrodynamic zone so we really have to write some kind of expansion in terms of p equal to p bar plus or, or in the non dimensional form uh, p equal to 1 plus uh, Mach number times uh, p 1 plus Mach number times uh, square p 2 plus ta 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 ta. And uh, in the end it will turn out that this is acoustics and this is hydrodynamics and, and so on, but we are not going to do this if time permits we will do it towards the end of the thing. So, uh, I mean there is there are some delicate issues there that I am pushing under the carpet here uh, because I am not dealing with hydrodynamics at all 
instead I am going to model hydrodynamics, <coughs> why do I need to model hydrodynamics or why do I need to model the heat transfer, where does that show up, <coughs> where does this unsteady fluctuations in velocity in the hydrodynamic zone and so on, why, why is it important because the heat transfer comes in and why is that important that is what is actually driving the acoustic field, but instead <coughs> I am going to replace it with like a correlation for the heat release rate rather than solve the equation just to make things simple, but if you have to really solve it you have to address all these issues and if time permits I will teach you at the end otherwise privately it can be done okay, <coughs> but it is a very interesting and exciting <coughs> topic and it is a very uh, open topic I mean people are doing research on this uh, even now, so I, I mean even only now some minimal breakthroughs are being made, so it is open to you after this class you can get to do very exciting stuff. So now let us do energy equation, So I, I just uh, forgot to mention one thing, when I started doing this first I did this on my own and I was wondering what to do with the rho naught, but it turns out that, uh, so I divided by rho naught, multiplied by rho naught and all that, but it turns out that uh, uh, that rho naught will just disappear because it will get absorbed into the C and then that will come into this our beautiful Mach number and so on, so you do not have to deal with it. <coughs> Is this okay? any mistakes and I am making plenty just let me know. So let us uh, recast this, so I can remove this. prime and I am bringing P not here, I have a, a L here and there is L here, so that can come to the top, so L A can go, now there is a, a C not here which is coming in the numerator, if I divide through it by that C not, that C not will come under this U, so that will be and there is this gamma here, so gamma u naught by c naught and uh, so divided by c naught, so I should get a c naught at the denominator, this is what I have, let me check if this is okay, yeah. so this can be even rewritten as dou p prime by dou t plus gamma m w prime x equal to uh, this let us see if we can make it pretty, so if you multiply by gamma and divide by gamma and then if I can multiply by, so gamma p naught is what, gamma p naught is rho naught c naught squared, so I can You can leave it that way also, or if you think this is pretty, then you can do this. Are there any 
Questions? Anybody? Well, okay. Okay. So now uh, we need to model this q dot prime. That is the crux of the matter. And how can we do that? And and as I mentioned, we have to set up a two-scale problem and then solve for the hydrodynamics in the inner zone, and that's how you would get it. But if I want to avoid that, I could use a correlation. Do you know any correlation for flow pass cylinder? Heat transfer from flow pass cylinder. Have you come across? I'm sure you would have come across. How do you measure uh, flow, flux, turbulent flow fluctuations? What device do you use? Some kind of anemometry. Hardware. How do you, how does hardware work? What do you measure there? Yeah. So that's deal with temperature and heat transfer and all that. How does that relate to the flow velocity? Yeah, so what how do they calculate calibrate it using what? There is a correlation between heat release rate and uh, there is a correlation rate between heat release rate and the velocity fluctuations. What is it called? What law is King's law? Don't ring a bell, okay. Huh? King's law hot hot where okay. King's law. Yeah. Okay, never mind. It doesn't matter. It's just a name. If you discovered it, you would have had your name on it. Okay. So basically, I need a uh, relation for Q dot prime in terms of u prime right but we saw from our early analysis that when things that happen today are not affected by what your actions are now but what is what are the actions yesterday for example now you are sleepy because you didn't sleep last night so uh, it, it's so there is a delay and that's what is affecting so so we want to get some correlation of uh, this form that is the crux of the matter. So here it comes handy. I am not saying that going to have a correlation is the way around it. Uh, I am just for convenience and tractability I am doing this and you miss a lot of things anytime you make a simplification. I mean that is the way life is. Anytime you gain something you lose a lot of things. So it is a question about what do you want to gain versus what you are willing to lose. Everything comes to that finally. I will explain the symbol. So this is the correlation that we use. Uh, L w is the length of the wire, T w is the wire temperature, T bar is the uh, gas temperature. I should use T naught actually just to be consistent. And uh, lambda is the conductivity, C v is the specific heat constant volume, rho is the density. D W is the wire diameter and uh, uh, U naught is the base flow velocity, U prime is the uh, fluctuating velocity, the subscript F stands for 
the fluctuating the fluctuating velocity changes across the tube right I mean there is a standing wave and so on. So, at the uh, heater location F should strictly stand for flame but uh, it is okay here we have heater no flame. So, the subscript F uh, T is the time tau is the <coughs> characteristic time delay with which this heat transfer happens and delta is the delta function. So, we can uh, rewrite this as Uh, it is the uh, area of the tube, uh, area of the duct, and, and oh, I forgot to mention one. Thing. So, uh, there is a factor 3 that is coming up, which is um, if you have seen King's law, it does not have this factor 3. Uh, so, the original King's law, uh, if you look at the correlation, uh, q prime is a linear function of u prime till almost about uh, value of 1, and then the equation starts becoming non linear. So, there is a lady called Maria Heckel, she works in Kiel University. So, she claims that the nonlinearities will come in much earlier, and the nonlinear terms are important when u prime over u bar is of the, of the order of one third, she saw in her experiments. So, she changed the correlation to this form, uh, it was uh, purely based on her experimental evidence, and so we use this correlation. So, this is we will call this Heckel's correlation. is my friend uh, you know in India we if we have politicians as father sons will be politicians grandson will be politicians Karnadi, Kanimuri and all so on and so forth Rajiv Gandhi came from Indira Gandhi uh, and now who is this? Uh, Rahul Gandhi. So, in Germany um, father is a scientist daughter is a scientist. So, uh, Maria Heckel's father uh, professor Heckel was a famous very famous acoustic professor daughter also studied acoustics, she is in Kiel which is in England, but uh, so here we do this only for politicians there uh, professors, professors also seem to do that. So, I will take this u naught out. So, then I can write in terms of the non dimensional fluctuation. Multiplied by delta of L a into x minus f x f. So, this is the correlation. So, I will write identity, you can check this yourself, it is quite easy to prove. One second, let me write this. I divided by u naught, so u f prime tilde over u naught is u f prime. Okay. So, this is a identity for the delta function. So, if you have delta of L a times x minus x f, you can take the L a out and write in terms of delta of x minus x f. So, if you use this and then we can say
and I can cancel these two LA's. So I can rewrite this entire right side as k times square root of modulus of 1 over root 3 plus u f prime of t minus tau minus 1 over root of 1 over 3 times delta of x minus x f. So I call this whole thing as uh, k. So this whole thing I can call k and say this k times this term times the delta function. So delta function is because we have a compact heat source. So if you uh, see the typical dimensions of a Ricci tube, the uh, uh, the size of the heat is of the order of half a millimeter or something, uh, whereas the uh, tube itself is like one meter long. So one divided by um, half into ten power minus three is like two thousand. So one thousand or two thousand is a big factor so we can say our heat source is compact and use a delta function here. So I hope this is clear are there any questions. So just to uh, summarize I will write these equations together. So I have the uh, what is this equation again momentum equation so this is the momentum equation and energy equation is dou p prime by dou t plus gamma m dou u prime by dou x equal to k times so this is the energy equation let us call this 1 let us call this 2 and the k is here. So now the issue is okay what we have done so far is to derive the non-dimensional equations for momentum and energy and as I mentioned for low, low base flow values your uh, continuity equation can be later solved for to get a rho prime you do not have to solve it in a coupled manner that is the first thing. Now the issue is how to get uh, uh, how to get the uh, a solution in time domain. We will stop here.